这个是我们的这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个
So, um, because I'm uh, coming from uh, the region of Amdo, where is spoken the Amdo dialect, um, that is a bit different for pronunciation for other dialects, Kam dialect and Central Laza dialect. So, for this reason, most probably uh, among of them, the people that they <coughs> they could not maybe sometimes understand some words, but it's true that. The common language of written language is the same, so I hope that uh, all of you can uh, understand what I'm going to say. He came here legally by receiving proper uh, documentation. <coughs> yes. So uh, I, I came here legally by receiving proper documentation to participate uh, of this international meeting of the uh, three lineage of Buddhism that is uh, here in Montreal thanks to the invitation of Lama Tenzin. Mm -hmm. Junta <laughs> So I come uh, from uh, the Ando place of Nawa and uh, the uh, monastery where I come from, from is called uh, Gomo, Gomo Gompa, the monastery of Gomo where uh, mainly he studied, uh, are studied the tradition of uh, Gelupa and uh, more or less there are uh, more than uh, 1,000 monks studying there. The study there are of many kind, uh, from debate to uh, the Tantra study. And uh, I spent time there to study and also, um, and, and it is a monastery that is uh, there more than 200 years. Uh, where they were conducting all those study of tantra debate and so forth, and so by following those study, I went also to study and spent some time at the uh, uh, other famous monastery, Labran Tashice. <laughs> Then, Hutra Tina in Persian, the Gilgin Gushalinoa, 
Teacher for Shirak uh, uh, Norwiling uh, Institute for last uh, 21 years. So when he uh, uh, has been teaching there, uh, all the most of the teachers over there have no salary and they uh, don't pay even a penny. So this Raja Shirak Norwiling Hlobling is the first institution that found by Tibetan. Uh, people. So in this uh, school, um, they teach uh, language, uh, Tibetan uh, literature, and also English and Chinese language. And also we have a minor five and, um, and, and five major um, philosophy of uh, Tibetan and, and Buddhism. So we teach <coughs> everything to this uh, school. So from this school, in the past years, over 500 uh, students managed to go to colleges and universities, and also over 400 uh, graduate students, uh, 400 teachers graduate from uh, that uh, school. So presently, there are over 1,000 uh, students, and also they recently found a school for uh, girls or women. So there are also over 600 uh, students at that girls' school. So this is short uh, biography of a, a master's uh, life. <laughs> Kanata so today we are here all together and uh, I'm going to, uh, to explain uh, briefly about uh, an introduction of uh, the precious Buddhist teaching that are uh, uncommon uh, belonging to uh, a, um, a special way of uh, of uh, presenting them that is belonging to the tradition of the Tibetan uh, Buddhism in the, that is coming from this precious land. Mm. 
Ucik jalur tomanya terzamboni, mi akun cibar ci jar nyerjit cirala ngaco buka kembali tola nampun cilik dalam tari wamari, dengan apa pun cilik dalam tari wamari. Ti jenjen ci ut jar nyerjit cirala pun mungkin tu puterong ke tombani tari pun cilik dalam tapa senkan ter tapa sile. So. Before in the land of Tibet uh, was not present the, uh, the Tibetan Buddhism, uh, but uh, came later after before there was tradition of uh, Bonpo and was with uh, the king uh, Nyata Nyata Zambu, Nyata Zambu that uh, first uh, uh, was uh, introduced in the seventh century. Yeah? It's a, 27th after, yeah, in the 27th was uh, introduced Buddhist in Tibet. Jalo Sanja Sanja Sosum Goloke Jakar Pompeyani Mani Olivari Machikimola Lutza Latisa Latisa Deni Tatina Mani Jakar Pompeyani Matsu Pochi Mola Lepari Tukote Honsonga Pecah kasih tang, dah kenderasi. Orang pun saja wajib dia. Untuk di zaman tu, tiada pecah kasih tang, cuti je. Yang nak kenderasi, kenderasi. Nampi jaga rumah dengan cukup kerja lagi orang orang itu. Tu boleh nampak juga bola dari tempat ni. Dia nanti jalur semja atau semja susun dalam ni. Dia boleh boleh nampak lah nampak juga. Tu ni apa sih? Tiada nak kira ni. Nini Gemata Hakumasan. In the in the three uh, three hundred thirty three in uh, Tibet they came uh, two uh, great scholars. The names one is Litis and uh, uh, They came and uh, with them uh, they uh, with them they bring a lot of uh, uh, holy books and uh, statues. Uh, Chorten, that are stupas, and so forth. And that was the first time that came in Buddhism, and it was the first spread of Buddhism in Tibet. มีอัศจรรย์ปุจิจารุมีอัศจรรย์กับการเตะเตะได้กับกระทรวงเตะเตะได้ปุจิฮักงกับเอ่อเอ่อพอจังกับยังทุกข์ละจานิชูปะปน
uh, gave a great contribution of the uh, screening of Buddhist the, the, the kings before him there were uh, Janya Sorsen, Jume Karve, and we say that it was an, an, an emanation of architecture. Uh, so generally we say that the land of Tibet is the land of Avalokiteshvara. And uh, uh, we, we said that Sonsengambo as a king was recognized as a manifestation. And uh, as a lama, uh, we had the first lama that came in Tibet to, uh, to, to teach Buddhism, the world lama, Atisha. And so uh, it was uh, uh, thanks to those uh, first uh, uh, people that... And now, the now His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And now, and now His Holiness the Dalai Lama, they are uh, the main... Uh, Let's say reincarnation manifestation of Avalokiteshvara. And uh, not only that were well, not the Buddhism, but also they didn't have uh, in Tibet a system of uh, uh, writing, so they didn't have a written language. And uh, by making a relationship between uh, Nepal and China that they had uh, scriptures, then uh, uh, thanks to Son Sangambo, at that time they started to uh, build a system of language that uh, was useful for the culture and uh, for the understanding of the Dharma. Uh, and uh, the first great contribution of a complete uh, uh, system of, uh, of uh, writing uh, was thanks to the manifestation of Manjushri, uh, the uh, great scholar called Tommy Sambota, that in 629 uh, started to uh, spread the written language of Tibetan. So uh, 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 so in the seventh year, <coughs> uh, fourth, I think it's the seventh century. Four seven years. Four seven years. No, I'll I'll try. It. Okay, okay. No, I will try. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Tumisamata, who is the emanation of Manjushri and who 
uh, sent it to India by King uh, Somtsen Gambo and Thumasambhata stay in India over 700, uh, I'm sorry, seven years. So in just those uh, um, uh, seven years, and he uh, learned uh, from uh, many uh, Indian uh, masters and how to uh, translate. We have a certain uh, trim of this uh, translation system. So he, he studied all those through that seven years. So when he went to India for seven years, and he studied uh, uh, Indian uh, language Sanskrit, and also he studied intensively uh, Buddhism in India as well. So then he returned to Tibet, and when he came to Tibet, it was uh, uh, 646. So that's the time and he uh, established a uh, Tibetan written language. So after established Tibetan uh, uh, writing uh, language, so they translate uh, teachings about uh, Avalokiteshvara, King Rezik, uh, which uh, include over 20 volumes. So that is the, the Buddhism that translated into Tibetan, the first Buddha's teaching, Buddhism, Buddhist teaching that translated into Tibetan language since Tibetan language uh, started. Uh, so after those uh, uh, 21 aspects of uh, uh, teachings of Avalokiti Shora translate into Tibet, Tibetan language, and then Tibetan people began to uh, practice uh, Buddhism, starting with the practice on Avalokiteshvara. So during those times, there was no uh, monastic uh, communities, but yet they uh, uh, practice uh, Buddhism, uh, particularly uh, on Tiranya's uh, Avalokiteshvara, we call it in a uh, Tukji Chimbo. So there uh, was a house or, or temple uh, called um, Kunkar Maruna, which um, can hold uh, over 300 people. So when we practice uh, that Avalokiteshvara at that time, uh, without uh, monastic community, uh, we have uh, practice based on lay uh, precepts. So th those, those type of practitioners we call Ngakwa, uh, who wear uh, white robes like this gentleman is wearing. So this is called Ngakwa tradition. And during that time, there's no monastic communities. Uh, 
So the reason why uh, the Tibetans have a special connection uh, to Avalokiti Shora Kinrezi is because uh, the first teaching of Buddhism that translated into Tibetan language since Tibetan language start is a Kinrezi. So that's one of the reasons. Since then, and we practice in Kinrezi and recite the mantra of uh, uh, six syllables. So that's why and in Tibet we call um, Jinrezi, uh, the Avalokiteshvara or Kutichimbo is the principal deity or principal, uh, 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 what do you call it? principal uh, uh, bodhisattva or principal uh, Buddha. So, so because of this uh, reason, we have a very special connection to uh, Bodhisattva uh, Avalokiteshvara. So that's why wherever I go in within the Tibet, when I give lectures and I tell everybody that the Chinese is very special uh, for uh, for Tibetans. So even uh, like the babies, when they first started to talk, they know how uh, to recite this mantra. And uh, and we have a saying that when uh, kids uh, fell in the sleep, uh, sleep with the sound of reciting mantra by mother, and when they wake up in the morning, and also the first word, or they wake up with the hearing the sound of mantra of Avalokiteshvara or Manitenya. So that's why in the Tibetans have a very special connection to Tugichimbo and Avalokiteshvara. <laughs> Then However, when we recite the mantra of Omane Peme Hong, it's actually not Tibetan language, it's Sanskrit. Om Mani Peme Hong, a sixth syllable. So the first syllable, Om, which include uh, three letters, A, O, and M, and these three syllables or three letters representing uh, the seat of uh, uh, three kayas, Buddha Dharma Kaya, Samboga Kaya, and Nirmana Kaya. And then the next syllable, Mani, is the, uh, the ultimate view, and also it, it, it is uh, uh, the representation of the, the perfection of uh, wisdom. And then the next syllable is uh, Peme, is representing the limitless uh, compassion or great uh, uh, Bodhicitta. So Hong is a combination or, or union of these. So basically, when we recite Omane Peme Hong, and we are, are praying that the Buddha's uh, three kayas, Dharma Kaya, some, uh, uh, actually, uh, no, body, speech, mind of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas uh, uh, become inseparable of our own body, speech, mind. So meaning, whenever we recite Om Mani Padme Hong, basically you are praying that your body, speech, mind become body, speech, mind of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So this is what we are saying when we recite Om Mani Padme Hong. Uh, 
So sometimes in, in certain areas or, or certain tradition in Tibet we recite Om Mane Pemi Hong Shi, there's a shi syllable at the end. So basically shi syllable is the root uh, uh, syllable, uh, root mantra of the, the Bodhisattva. And for example, when we recite the mantra of uh, Lord Manjushri Omane Dewa, Omarapatana uh, Di, so Di is also root syllable. That's a similar, but usually we recite Omane uh, Peme uh, Hong. So, so the, this mantra is actually known as a six syllable mantra. So when you uh, say six syllable, there's a no shi, on, only on mani bene hong. So the reason why we say hong, uh, not hong, uh, is because the, uh, the ha, there's a top of that, the ha syllable, there's a, a, a circle which sound ma, but in this case you have to use the sound as a nga, so which becomes on mani bene uh, hong. So uh, even if we say Om Mani Padme Hum Shi, it is difficult to say that it is contradiction to the actual uh, teachings of uh, the sutra and so on. But uh, the be best way is to recite Om Mani Padme Hum, which is commonly uh, well-known uh, mantra that we recite in the, with the six syllables. <laughs> ナチュポポロアラタのゴンバイワマリ、チャワデンバイワマリ。so, uh, so since then we have been practiced on uh, Avalokiteshvara and the six mantras. So that's why uh, the Chinese uh, is the special uh, deity for uh, for the Tibetans. But uh, uh, even during the King of Sunzin Gambo, uh, there's no uh, monastic communities, and, and even after four uh, kings, there's no monastic. But during uh, the 38th king of Tibet, King Chisung Detsin, it's uh, uh, 8 or 9, so he uh, start first uh, monastery, uh, the monastery of Samye. Uh, so King um, Chisung Detsin built Samye Monastery, the temple, the first temple in Tibet, in uh, 9809. So uh, 811, eight, and he invite uh, Lopun uh, Pemanjune, uh, Guru Rinpoche from India, Guru Rinpoche and also uh, Kenbo, uh, Shendarachita. So these are two and that's the time they start the monastic uh, uh, community. 
Kaçın burada sattı günden mi? Matsu poderim ve poğma adın tomer raptasyon var etti. Dima ola matsu samma madden lakayı var. Samma sonatı nasu nyem sapa. Sota şey var. Put loğa ni gendin dava şeyna. Dava çi tam mıdır ola. Sota şey ima ola nyem sapa lakayı var etti. Jinsan gı matsu poçi lorcu gı tam gı. Da gendin bi toma ala tomer java den şey var. Konsu ima ola samma madden lakayı var. So, uh, when uh, King Chisun Dietzin invite uh, Guru Nbache and the Shendar Rakhita, uh, the seven people uh, became uh, monks from the, uh, the camp of Shendar Rakhita. So these seven people we call uh, Semimidun, so seven person of, uh, it's almost like a test. So the reason why they call is because before there was no the monastic system, so they wanted to test if the Tibetan people have had a bit <coughs> eligible to become monk or not, you know. So that's why they use these six, pe seven people call uh, call them semi madun. Tina ngatu kanchin borja satu den ni getsri tangelong ka dumba dumbi jin tela chesin chu arji dumba la pe la ngatu thomar lamin den ni kawa gen kawa shiwa ni somote mutsi kumo la. どんな特徴、特徴なんかも、なんかも言われ。また、だけ、テレンジャーだわ、スリランカだわ、シェルランカだわ、デンラーは、夏、だわ、カシラ、だわ、シナ、チョコリ。ま、ゾカシラ、だ
and sutra tradition and tantra tradition but those both traditions are uh, mahayana dinan chandeni chandar natu dachakatoba sanji jundem deji tomar chuchin korlo gana kotsu chukon tok sonsur de mortu ndurdushina natu bolwa da dari chulukte tekpa chimbu chulu yemba de muzun saoshi takre so if we ta- talks about the how <coughs> Lord Buddha gave his first teachings and where he gave and how he gave, so then it will make it easier for us to recognize the where Tibetan Buddhism will fit in these different levels of the Buddhist tradition. <coughs> So Buddha and Buddha Shakyamuni, the historical uh, Buddha Shakyamuni is uh, he uh, came before two, uh, 2,558 years ago, according to, based on uh, uh, Theravada tradition, and according to the calendar of the Theravada tradition, and the Buddha Shakyamuni came 2,558 years ago. The 2,500, he, he passed away 2,558 years ago. He passed into Parinirvana. Uh so the Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni, and he uh, uh, did a uh, hardship of his practice for six years. So, uh, and he achieved enlightenment after this solitary uh, meditation uh, retreat. So, so he. Uh, can you take the, the baby outside? Uh, so after he uh, practiced for six years, he achieved enlightenment age of 35. <laughs> So, when he start his uh, retreat or meditation, and he uh, composed a uh, composed uh, a verse, a short verse, and he said that when I start sitting on this. Uh, very moment, the cushion that I'm I'm sitting. Until reach enlightenment, I will not get up from this cushion, even though my physical death, body dissolve, I will not get up from this seat. So this is how he took the commitment. <laughs> So after six years, the fourth month of the lunar calendar, the fifteenth day, fifteenth day, very early in the morning, he achieved his final realization. So achieve enlightenment. So this is the first of twelve deeds of Buddha Shakyamuni. So, 
So after he achieved enlightenment, and as, as we all know, that he turned three a will of Dharma. So first will of Dharma called the, four, the, the, the turning will of uh, Dharma of Four Noble Truth. And then second one is called uh, the will of uh, characteristicless. Is there such a word? And then the third one is um, is um, what do you call the word? Lepernambar Jeva is a class classification, turning wheel of classification. So basically, he turned in, in a, after he achieved enlightenment, and during uh, forty years, he turned three teachings, three wheel of Dharma. So within these three uh, uh, teachings or three uh, will of Dharma include 84,000 aspect of teachings. So these 84,000 teachings you can also include into uh, 12 branches of teachings. So these 12 uh, branches of Buddha's teaching, and you can include into three aspects, Vinaya, Abhidharma, and Sutra. So the teaching that came to uh, Tibet has all of these three uh, traditions of Buddhism, such as Vinaya, Abhidharma, and Sutra. So we have actually a uh, complete, the full packages of these three uh, teachings of the Buddha at three different yanas or three different levels. But the certain areas in the Buddhist regions, such as Sri Lanka or, or, or Thailand and so on, uh, even though they have a Vinaya teachings, but, the, but some of the areas may not have a sutra. And even though if there are certain areas may have the sutra, but there are no um, um, Abhidharma. But the Tibet, the Tibetan Buddhism, what it makes it so special and unique is because the teaching that came to Tibet, <coughs> it includes three, uh, three yanas of Buddha's teachings. Uh, so Mm -hmm. uh, 
So the reason why we proudly said that the Tibetan Buddhism is the Mahayana is because and we have all these three traditions. So generally there are Mahayana and Hinayana. Sometimes we say Hinayana and, and also uh, Theravada. So the reason why uh, Maha and Hina is uh, or this is a Sanskrit term, uh, the Hinayana means uh, lesser and Maha is a greater. So it doesn't mean uh, Mahayana have a bigger body and Hinayana have a, a smaller body. And also it doesn't mean that Mahayana teachings have a thicker book, a text. And, and Hinayana have a smaller, it doesn't mean anything like that. The reason why we say it's a Mahayana, and, and what, what it makes it different, differentiate between Mahayana and Hinayana, is depends on whether you have the Bodhicitta, and uh, um, uh, the altruism, altruistic uh, uh, mind. So even though you uh, uh, have a miracle powers, that even you can fly, or even you realize the true nature of emptiness. If you are absence or, or lack of the bodhicitta mind, altruism mind, you are Hinayana. So the reason why Tibetan Buddhism is Mahayana is because the Sutra and Abhidharma that Buddha taught is mainly emphasized on compassion, loving kindness, and altruism. So therefore, we can proudly say that Tibetan Buddhism is a Mahayana tradition. Uh, so because we have not only the Mahayana, but the Tibetan Buddhism is a teaching uh, uh, that can consist every levels, every levels of, of a Buddhist tradition, Theravada, Mahayana, and also uh, Vajrayana. So that's why I always proudly said that this is uh, we have a special. Um, uh, we we are special people because we have a, such a precious like wish fulfilling jewel. Uh, <laughs> So it's not that Buddhism is only came to Tibet, and it's not like if other countries doesn't have it. Even uh, like if you look in China, the, Chi the Chinese Buddhism actually started even before 800 years of Buddhism came to uh, Tibet. But that's that the Chinese Buddhism does not have a Vajrayana tradition. So the Tibetan Buddhism has a Vajrayana tradition, Theravada tradition, Vinaya, Abhidharma, and the Sutra. All those three traditions and well maintained with the pure lineage and the pure instruction and the valid 
uh, uh, tradition. So that's why we can proudly say that this is a wish fulfilling jewel, but this is not only something that beneficial for, for Tibetans, but also this as uh, the Buddhism that does, uh, uh, unite with the Tibetan culture is a, something that can really uh, benefit and make a great contribution to the, to the happiness of all sentient beings and also it can make a great contribution to the world peace. So because of this, uh, the Buddha's Buddhism, uh, Buddha's teaching, which is like a, a, a precious, which fulfilling uh, jewel, and even when I come to uh, 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 developed uh, country like Canada, I can still, you know, invited to, uh, uh, um, you know, institutions like the University of Toronto, York University. It's not because of I am a so um, a, um, scholar, and also not because I have so much. Uh, um, big title and so on, but it's because I have, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, learn and practice on this precious teaching of Buddha, which consists the three levels, the three yanas. <laughs> Shalomatongyamukonsonsona, so this is not because uh, uh, I mean Tibetan uh, Tibet is not uh, so developed uh, uh, material perspective we are very uh, sort of uh, poor and also we don't have a modern uh, science, education, and so on. But because this precious of Buddha's teaching, we will get this great respect and wherever you go. For instance, if I look in my audience here today, and not only Tibetans, we have also uh, people, Western people, Chinese people. So uh, probably uh, those people who are here are uh, they can be uh, richer or, or wealthier than us, but still they come to listen to us. It's, it shows that what we have learned, what we have, it's, a, it's, a, it's a something that can give um, uh, happiness, uh, benefit for their, um, it's a science of mind, science of humanity. That is the Buddhist uh, teaching, the principle of Buddhism, Buddhist teaching give, can give limitless, um, happiness into individuals' mind. 
So when I talk about how precious and how important, how valuable Tibetan Buddhism is, it um, doesn't mean I'm saying that other religious, Christian, Muslim, are they're not valuable, they have no uh, benefit. I'm not saying that, but... Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, the, the, the more uh, scientists' uh, knowledge uh, developed, the, uh, the Buddhism also can uh, go uh, uh, side by side with the science, no matter how uh, advanced their uh, knowledge, intellectual goals. So that really shows that the Buddhism it's a science of mind that can really go side by side with modern science. for example, when you look in uh, uh, Vajrayana Buddhism and Tantra tradition, we have four levels of Tantra tradition. Uh, uh, Kriya, Upa, uh, Yoga, and Mahayoga, and so on, these four levels. Uh, in China, the, the Kriya Tantra, and actually it did uh, uh, establish in China, but they haven't managed to continue and ma maintain. And uh, in Japan, they have the Kriya Tantra. So Japanese Buddhist says we are uh, Vajrayana practitioners, but they only have the first level, the first yana of the Tantra, which is Kriya. But in Tibetan Buddhism and Tibetan uh, Tantra yana, Tantra tradition, we have all four levels. Uh, Kriya Tantra, Yoga Tantra, uh, Upa, uh, so we have uh, not much time, and in short time, I cannot explain everything about different levels of Tantra and so on, but I would like to request one thing. So this request is, I have to uh, talk uh, based on a story that came from India. So 
Lord Jiji Amna. In the history, uh, once <coughs> in India, the Buddhist was so established like a, a sun. Uh, in the Nalanda University, uh, there was a great Buddhist university that, uh, of, of Nalanda University. So during that Nalanda University, each it has a four gate in four directions of the university. Each gate has 400 scholars, 500 scholars. However, in India during these times, the monasteries, of course, they study and practice very well. But then, in the, in the lay people's the community, they haven't managed to, to educate the people on, on, on Buddhism. So therefore, it was very easy to destroy. Because if there is no monasteries that can uh, continue the Buddhist tradition, there is no enough knowledge in education in the lay people community. So therefore, it was easy to destroy. So the reason why I have to say that with the Indian history uh, story is because now we Tibetans are in that same risk. The reason why I say it's a risk is because uh, in Tibet, of course, and everybody have a devotion, everybody recites mantras and to turn the prayer wheels and so on, but we don't put enough time to learn what is the principle uh, of Buddhism, what is the principle view, what is the con principle uh, conduct. So that's why I am saying it's in the risk. What I want to request, especially for for uh, Tibetans who are based in uh, in a country uh, in Canada, is if you really wanted to be a Buddhist, uh, uh, the genuine Buddhist practitioners, and who want to have a devotion to the teaching and to the Dharma, and you have to know the principle of the Buddhism, the key element of the Buddhism. So, if we wanted to continue and maintain the precious teaching of the Buddha that we have uh, in Tibet and with the Tibetans, uh, we really have to study uh, listening and contemplating on the teaching the, to, to know the principles. But although we do have a people, uh, Western people, Chinese people and from other countries, and they have interest in it to learn and practice, but, uh, but it is very important for ourselves also 
to learn, not only not only relying on on a throwing on a, uh, uh, doing the circumambulations or uh, doing the prostrations or, or or turning the prayer wheels. You really have to put effort to to learn what is the real uh, uh, teaching. Because if you don't have a, that, then monastic communities can not only hold uh, keep the, the 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 Buddhist uh, teachings anymore. So uh, so similar, you know, we should uh, look up like other religions, uh, Christians. You know, it's not only that their uh, their monks and nuns are uh, no, but everybody have a uh, somehow uh, uh, idea or knowledge of what Christian is. So so, so we should learn from them as if we wanted to to keep our precious teaching of Buddha. So if you uh, wanted to be a real uh, Buddhist practitioner who wanted to achieve enlightenment, you have to study and contemplate, uh, listening, contemplate and meditate on the teachings. And as a result, we will be achieving enlightenment. But if you cannot do this, just doing just wishing or making aspiration prayers will not lead you to the state of enlightenment. Uh, although I'm sure and you do know uh, the lot of uh, principle of Buddhism because I believe that you have uh, 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 tremendous opportunities to listen uh, the, the various uh, teachings from various uh, masters. Uh, but uh, if, uh, if you look in, in Tibet, uh, people don't get much opportunity to, to study, uh, spend time and energy to, to study the real um, you know, a meaning of Buddhism. So therefore, if you really ask uh, somebody, uh, uh, Buddhist people, if you, what, how, how, how does this karmic cause and effect work? And how does this past life and future life and so on? So people don't have an answer for that. But then if you say, okay, you're not Buddhist, they will be upset. They think they have, they are Buddhist, they have a devotion. But then we are lack of knowledge of, you know, to knowing this, how the karmic karma, karmic cause and effect works, and how and why we have the past life and future lives. But it's very difficult. So actually, Lord Buddha, and he showed the, the proper path to us already, and he indicate, he emphasized very much on how important it is to study uh, the Buddhism. He said, we have to listen to reflect on and meditate on the teaching. So you have to listen from the masters, and what you, then you have to contemplate on what you have listened, and then you have to meditate on, uh, on what you have contemplated on, uh, over and over. So this is the, the way and direction that Buddha uh, showed. And the Buddha says, the only thing that I can do as a Buddha is to show you the uh, path. But whether you will achieve in life, whether you will get to the destination or not is absolutely up to you. 
Jamni Kunchu some Matu Karma, Jimber Lakayori, Sola and Yukayori, Yenai Matu, Muni Tony, Sanji Kunchu, Chu Kunchu, Gendan Kunchu, the Kandari Lana, Joan Lunjena, Pachiraziki, Sanji Kunchu, the Matu Lakamana, the Kanga, Ngastu Chimata, but the injuries, Chu Kunchu, the Matu Pecha injuries, Gendan Kunchu, the Zan Shantan Nayo, the Tenda injury, Tenda the Santana, Muni, the Stum Kunza, the London Kunzo, the Sanji. Golum Nichi Duati Chu Conchori, Rituti Yundan Jetton Dambati, Gendan Conchori, Tendago, Jensen Hivi or Mari, Machiwati, Machi Vitava Kamat, Honir Machio, Natu Nachu, Nachu, the Petula Masson Vitavatila Trivaris. So if you, if you ask uh, uh, what is uh, the three jewels, of course we do recite uh, refugee prayers and Bodhis, uh, uh, Bodhisattva prayers, and also we. Um, Mm, we do make us special prayers, but if you really think carefully, if somebody asks you what is Buddha, and what is Dharma, what is the Sangha, so this is actually a principle uh, of, of a Buddhism, and we take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, but what is the Buddha, and what is the Dharma, what is the Sangha, we may not have the answer. We may think the Buddha is the statue that permanently stay in our shrine room, and when uh, they say what is the Dharma, and they you might think that uh, the prayer books are the Dharma and then the Sangha is the, the somebody who wearing the red robes and so on. But that's, uh, uh, you know, it's very um, uh, not right. So you have to know when, what, when they ask, what is the Buddha? Buddha is uh, somebody who completely abandoned any negativities and accomplished every qualities. That is the Buddha. And then the Dharma is the... Uh, the, the combination of um, the path and, uh, and the cessation and then Sangha is the beings who have these eight qualifications so the qualities so these are very important things that we need to know as a Buddhist practitioners <laughs> So I have one example because I have heard the teaching one time, uh, teaching of His Holiness, and he was saying that one time he went to Ladakh and uh, region, so the Tibetan settlement, and then Tibetans, of course, we always say that he is. Uh, embodiment of a bodhisattva of a lot of and then when he arrived there when he got out from the cars there was a uh, elderly uh, lady she was so shocked because she said uh, she so shocked and she said wow chinese can move because she always think that the chinese or avalokiteshvara is the the statue made it by either wood or gold that always is sitting in the shrine so these it's a, it's a very uh, dangerous thing, so this can happen. So that's why we need, to, the reason why I'm emphasizing so much on how important it is to, to learn. And I'm also not saying that doing prostration and uh, circumambulation has no benefit. I'm not saying that at all, but what I'm saying is how important it is to study on principal aspect of the teachings of the Buddha. Uh, 
So the reason why I say is because uh, a lot of times we say, oh, oh my grandmother passed away in, uh, or, or over 90, uh, when she was in 97, but how many mantras she recited? How many millions and billions of, of Omane Pemeon she recited? But recitation is also good. It has a lot of benefit and a merit and so on. But the more important thing is you really have to learn. Gamolochi, <laughs> So I want to tell you one story. In, in Tibet, there was an elderly lady. She was very old. She always recited the mantra of Omane Be Mehong. And she recited um, uh, millions uh, of, uh, of mantra. And she doesn't know how to read. And of course, she doesn't know how to write. But she does more, you know, the divination. And her divination is actually very accurate. And a lot of people ask her to do that, divi uh, that divination. So the reason why uh, uh, she, her mo is so accurate is because the blessings that coming from the recitation of this uh, mantra. So that's why, uh, of course, the reciting the mantra, doing circumambulation, it has a tremendous blessing, but uh, the more important is education. Uh, <laughs> So what I, I, I was trying to say, how important, how uh, mandatory to learn uh, the meaning of the teachings uh, that Buddha taught. So of course, uh, this is uh, just a brief explanation of how important to have a more sort of knowledge on, on the teaching of the Buddha. So Buddha taught all these uh, different 84,000 aspects of, of teachings. Uh, so these all teachings actually consist in two um, two elements, uh, two, uh, two, two meaning. So the first one, uh, the first of the, the two is uh, mind training. So if you wanted to introduce uh, <coughs> Buddhism in the shortest way or in the four lines of a verse, it says you should not encounter with any uh, negative actions uh, or, or um, negative uh, yes negative actions and also you should cultivate um, virtues and, uh, and at the end, at the end we have to tame our mind taming our mind that is the Buddhism
So every one of us here, uh, whether you're Tibetan, whether you're Western, Chinese, you come here because all you, all of you uh, Buddhist practitioners who have a devotion to uh, the three jewels of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So what we should really try to do is we should try to control and aware of every any negative active negative uh, actions that arises within ourselves. We should try to control and we should try to apply the antidote to this uh, negative, uh, afflictive emotions such as uh, uh, anger, hatred, and jealousy, and, and so on. As a result, if you are taming your mind, actually your practice is uh, working. So when we say you have to practice uh, on Buddhism, doesn't mean you have to give up everything and go, go to solitary retreat. But the Buddhist practice is something that you can also uh, apply, apply in your daily life. And you can practice with your daily activities. For example, I am a Buddhist, simple Buddhist monk, and my responsibility is to practice the Dharma, to meditate. So I believe that meditation and practice Dharma does not only mean that to stay in a monastery and do meditation uh, only in a monastery. So the way I practice my Dharma is I go to different places, different monasteries, communities, and schools, and teach advice. So this is the principal teaching of the Buddha, is a compassion to benefit other sentient beings. So if I uh, do these things based on my pure, uh, genuine motivation, I believe, and this is my practice. I am actually doing my duty. so today we have uh, uh, people from uh, all kind of uh, uh, race. Uh, we have uh, Eastern people, Western people, and so on. So I would have a request as a Buddhist monk, and the whole purpose of my, uh, you know, uh, uh, the teaching is, is, is to benefit. So if uh, uh, as a Buddhist, and we do have a, a, a responsible uh, responsibility that can uh, um, oh let me try again uh, as as a Buddhist uh, what we have to do is we have to aware of our uh, views, our intention, and our conduct. So we should try, uh, try to control our action, our emotion, 
that does not harm any other sentient beings. Not only that, as a Buddhist, that you should be able to give some impression for other people that you are at slightly, at least slightly better, calm and compassionate. So if you are able to do that, then I will feel that I'm, I serve my responsibility. So in this short period of time, I was trying to explain how Buddhism came into Tibet and how Buddhism is established by Buddha in India and what is the principle of, of good, uh, Buddha's teaching and what is the benefit of the practice of Buddhism. So this is uh, as much as I tried to uh, cover, but now I wanted to conclude my uh, talk. So, so uh, usually what we think is the vows that we have is only have to keep by uh, monks, monastic communities, and we as a lay people, we don't have anything to uh, keep as, as a vow, but that's actually not to the monks and nuns have their own uh, vows to keep, but also lay people have uh, their own vows to keep as a Buddhist, and there is a vow of refuge, and also there is a, a vow of ten uh, virtues. Uh, because we have a, we as a Buddhist, we have taken refugee vow that we need to keep. Uh, the vow, refuge vow, if you have a taken refuge in Buddha, and you cannot take the refuge in any other religion, for example, Christian. So that is vow of taking refuge uh, to Buddha. And then uh, taking refuge in uh, Dharma. And as long as you have taken refuge in Dharma, you should not harm directly and indirectly to any other uh, sentient beings. That's our vow. And also, if, if you have taken refuge in a Sangha, means that you should not um, be so uh, close with the people who don't believe uh, vows and karma and so on. The reason why is because this uh, in, can influence you into a different actions. <laughs> So I wanted to say, I wanted to emphasize again uh, how important to study Buddhism based on having well maintained the vow of refuge. Uh, 
because we have not much time and I cannot explain uh, every details of the five paths and ten bumis and in emptiness and interdependent and the details of uh, uh, compassion and so on but uh, as a Buddhist and I have made my request as a Buddhist to um, <coughs> Based on uh, having genuine uh, refuge vows and a study uh, Buddhism. So we don't have a time to talk about <coughs> five bumis and ten, ten, ten bumis and five paths and how we should do meditation and what are the different classification and the steps of a meditation. For example, here in Canada, you may have a temples, uh, a few temples, and then I'm sure there are geishis and temples and so on. You should at least uh, a week or ten days a year to study uh, you know, Buddhism uh, uh, from them, and so that it can uh, approve your. Um, Improve on, on the development of your inner mind. I'm not asking you to uh, develop your mind so, so that you can be uh, more smarter to fight and, and so on, but I'm requesting you to develop your inner mind based on the genuine motivation of compassion and the loving kindness. The reason why I have to uh, give you that um, uh, 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 that um, that warning is because uh, we are living in a development country, and usually, uh, the, based on intellectual education advices, uh, uh, the main advice is how you can take from others. You know how, and, and all material development uh, advices. It's a it's a completely different from how we advices in Tibet, which is the, the compassion and loving kindness. <laughs> As a conclusion prayer, I would like to make a prayer that all the elder people will live long and the younger will uh, study and, and practice and also uh, we all um, uh, get together as soon as possible.
So since we have a, a, a number of senior people here, and I would like to give uh, some oral transmissions. So usually the connection between my, uh, uh, spiritual teacher and disciple has to come from your in, insight of your mind. So if those of you who doesn't want to have that spiritual uh, disciple and master connection, and then you can consider as just receiving some blessings. If those who you wanted to take uh, as as a you know. Uh, master uh, and disciple relationship or, or, or connection and then this is how we to do it. So whatever Buddhist practice we do, it is very important to have a pure motivation in whatever practice we do, I'm doing that for uh, benefit of countless uh, sentient beings. So this is called preliminary uh, step or, in, uh, or um, uh, the, the, the preparatory uh, uh, part of the practice. <laughs> Also, <laughs> Um 
So I am saying that tomorrow uh, is given talk at York University. Uh, there's a whole for a Senate chamber uh, in the Rose Building. If you're interested to come, uh, starting at three o'clock.